Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to paint this piece called Penguin Cafe Police Box. Let's get started. The paper I'm using is Stonehenge Aqua Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper. I've already done the pencil drawing. For this kind of illustration style, I like to draw with ink first and then paint watercolor over the top. I'm using Sakura Pigma Micron Pen. It is an archival black ink and is waterproof. So when painting over the top, it stays put and the ink won't dissolve or bleed. It's worth mentioning that I'm drawing in the order of the objects from front to back. If I did them in random order, I might accidentally put a line over an object in front. With waterproof ink, a mistake like that can't be erased or fixed easily. After drawing the outlines, I like to do some shading with the ink. I think it creates an interesting sort of texture when the watercolour is laid on top and see-through. Also watercolour is transparent and delicate. For really dark areas like this nighttime scene, it helps create that extra bit of depth. I prefer watercolour on top of ink instead of the other way around, because the overall effect of ink is more subtle. With the transparency of pigments on top, I feel the blending between the two mediums look more harmonious. Of course these are my personal preferences. I came to this method through trial and error, and I quite like the effect it creates. The drawing is complete. I'm using a kneadable eraser to remove the pencil drawing. The light blue colour you see is masking fluid. I used pebble drawing gum. It's a watery liquid that dries to an elastic film. It can later be removed by rubbing with a fingertip. I'm using it to protect the areas that I don't want to be contaminated by the colours nearby. The watercolour I'm using is Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolour. Because they are artist grade paints, the pigments have stronger staining power than the student grade paints, like the Cotman series. As the background areas have fairly strong pigments, if it accidentally flows into the light area, it could be difficult to remove completely. I'm painting the background buildings and sky. It is the darkest part of the picture. I want to make sure it has a correct overall value first. It is a night scene. I want the lights from the police box and lamppost to appear glowing and create a cosy atmosphere. It is easier to judge the value of the light areas when the darkest dark is already in place. This is a technique I learned from studying oil painting, which by the way is a medium I have more experience with. The common practice of painting watercolours is to darken gradually. Here because I'm not doing realistic rendering and the light and shade contrast is quite strong, I have found it quicker to get to the effect I want using this technique. If you don't live in the UK or haven't seen the BBC TV series Doctor Who, you may be wondering what's a police box. It is a public telephone call box for the use of members of the police or members of the public to contact the police. It was used in the UK throughout the 20th century. They are no longer in service. Some of the surviving ones have been converted into stalls that sell food and drink. There are quite a few of them left here in Scotland. I love them. I find them really cute. Police boxes were usually blue. Nowadays, they're repainted in all sorts of colours. I love the original blue colour. I think it's iconic, so I'm painting it blue to stay true to its origin.
I've seen many artists on YouTube explaining the techniques of painting an artwork. It's not so commonly explained the creative thought process behind it, which I think is equally as important. So I will tell you a bit of my approach. I always do a sketch digitally, and or in a physical medium first, before committing to the final piece. I had this idea of painting a police box for quite a while now. Whenever I walked past one that's open, I took reference pictures. I came up with this idea of it opening late at night with animal characters. So I did a mini watercolor in my sketchbook first. I liked the cozy atmosphere of the cold blue police box against the warm yellow lights, but not so sure about the animals and the milk sign are conveying a clear story of why the cafe is open late at night. I thought it'd be so amazing if the police box is a fish and chips cafe. The thought of hot, tasty food in a cold winter night would echo very well with the cold blue and warm yellow color contrast, and tells a more convincing story. It also combines two of the iconic British things, and I haven't seen a police box selling fish and chips here in Scotland. So I recreated it digitally. Experimented with different animals that I thought would make sense to associate with fish and chips. Have them in different positions and poses. Digital sketches are especially convenient for this, because you can divide and paint the objects onto multiple layers, and toggle them on and off to see the difference. It's quicker than painting multiple sketches in a physical medium. And it virtually cost me nothing once I've got the software and hardware set up. Eventually, I settled on the penguin as the shopkeeper, a sailor frog at the front of the queue being served, a cat queuing behind, and turned his head curiously looking at a seagull as cheerfully stealing the chips from the floor. I made the animals wear clothes because I think it gives them a bit more personalities. Also, it helps with creating a color palette that's more harmonious and fun. And last, I fill in the signs with a white sakura jelly roll pen. And the stars with Kuratake Gumsai Tanbi metallic gold paint, and the painting is complete. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Until next time, happy painting, everyone.